Welcome to Punctuation for Court Reporters, video number 53, Compound Adjective Examples, Part 1. I'm Ken Wick. Let's get started. So this video is going to cover seven compound adjective examples. Um, these are actual questions from uh, two Facebook groups of uh, Punctuation for Court Reporters and Punch Drunk, Punch Drunk on Punctuation. In the different videos was 51, I cover the rules. Video 52, I cover the three-step process. And uh, this video is going to cover seven examples. The next video will cover four examples. This video is going to be what I call the easier examples. And the last, the next one will be the harder examples. So let's get started. So just a summary of the three-step process. Check a Merriam-Webster dictionary. I'm going to check the free and unabridged Merriam-Webster dictionaries, the online versions, which I'm going to abbreviate this way. This is the unabridged with the U, and plus the dictionary.com which is based on the random house because the LMIG refers to the random house and the BGGP just refers to a standard dictionary so might as well check a different dictionary than the Merriam-Webster and the GRM uh, basically uses the Merriam-Webster so for uh, BGGP users go to step three but step two would be uh, use the style guides and the various references but basically, you hyphenate everything except for these three examples, adverbs with L and in L way, proper nouns, and these adverbs. So if you know what I'm talking about, go watch the, uh, at least video number 52. Finally, the third step is you use the words individually before the noun to see if they form a unit. So let's get to the examples. Example one, long-term pain. So step one is look it up in a dictionary as an adjective. Uh, yes, uh, all three dictionaries show it as hyphenated. Actually, we could just stop right there. We don't need to check anything else, but might as well just go through the process. Okay, pattern. It's not one of these patterns. You know, these patterns you don't hyphenate. So it's not one of these, so you hyphenate. And then uh, you check the words individually. It's not long pain. It's not term pain. Therefore, you know, it's, uh, it's you can't use them individually, so it's... Uh, it's being used as a unit, therefore you hyphenate. So we can actually come up with a dictionary answer without the dictionary. So it's long-term pain. Next example, pass-through ticket. Is it an adjective in a dictionary? Well, the collegiate and the, it's not found in the, the, the free one or in dictionary.com, but it is found in the unabridged and in the end of bridge it is hyphenated. We could actually stop right there. Well, let's say you didn't have the end of bridge dictionary. Okay, you check the pattern. It's not one of these patterns. You know, one of these patterns would say, no, you do not hyphenate. Or if it was one of these, you would not hyphenate it since it's not one of these patterns and you hyphenate. Now you check it individually. It's not a pass ticket or a due ticket. Therefore, you hyphenate. Therefore, we know we can come up with the unabridged. Uh, dictionary answer, uh, or we can come up with the answer without the unabridged dictionary. It's hyphenated, pass through ticket. So just so you know, four voted on the Facebook for uh, voted for the hyphen, and there and there were no votes for the no hyphen. What about a galvanized pipe disclosure? Okay, so now the example is getting a little harder. Well, let's check it out. We just follow the same process. Is it in the dictionary? No. Then find it in any of the dictionaries. Is it one of the patterns? No. Um, so you would hyphenate it, but I just want to point out it is adjective for less now, which means what? This is the pattern which basically says it's up to you to decide. But since, remember I said since it's not, we can find it in one of the dictionaries. I had hyphenated. So to me, it's hyphenated because I didn't find it in the dictionary. The pattern, it's not a galvanized disclosure. Now you could say it's a pipe disclosure, but so since it's so since it's no for this one, it's hyphenated. So I say it's hyphenated. So a galvanized pipe disclosure, this is an acceptable answer. You're going, what? I didn't see this before because, just so you know, if you happen to Google search it, uh, you'll come up with, there's only three occurrences on Google, but you know, who, who's to say the people who are writing stuff on Google are using it correctly? It's just nice, it's just interesting to check. 
but the reason I put it here is uh, Margie uh, Wakeman Wells, who's the author of the BGGP, uh, chimed in and said, no hyphen, galvanized pipe is an open compound, basically no hyphen. So she's basically saying that uh, this is a common term and it doesn't need to be hyphenated. So uh, my only, uh, remember I go back to the Greg's reference manual that says you decide when it's not one of the, or when it's adjective plus noun, and I say since it's not in the dictionary, it's not well known, therefore it should be hyphenated. hyphenated. But, uh, so this is an acceptable answer, but I would agree that uh, basically, probably in the pipe industry or that industry, this is a common term for that industry. So I would agree with Margie that this is a, probably a common term for that industry, so it would not be hyphenated. So this is probably a better answer but this is an acceptable answer. So next example, they have the two for one glasses. This is what the person said. You know, probably uh, it's more of a, they have the two for one glasses offer or something like that. But hey, we gotta go with it because that's what they said. People don't speak grammatically correct. So is it in the dictionary? Nope, don't find it in the dictionary. It's one of these patterns. No, it's not one of these patterns. It's actually, this pattern is actually known as a phrasal or a phrase. Basically it's a phrase, a two for one. So you'd hyphenate it and just, because uh, if I say noun plus adjective or adjective plus noun or adverb plus participle, probably most people would understand it. Phrasal, what, what, what's a phrase? So I just want to list a couple here. This would be like up-to-date system, over-the-counter medicine, around-the-clock service. So these ones in green are actually the, the phrasal adjectives that are hyphenated. So when you have a phrase, then all the words in the phrase are hyphenated. Because you have to, because all these words as a unit are modifying the noun. So the whole unit has to be hyphenated Okay, so let's go. Let's go now. It's usually individually, of course. Four is never going to. So it's not two glasses, four glasses, or one glasses. So it's hyphenated. So the answer is, they have the two for one glasses. So it's all hyphenated. And three people voted for hyphens, and there were no votes for no hyphen. Now example number five. Insufficient funds fee. Is it in the dictionary? It's not in any of the dictionaries. What about the pattern? No, it's not one of these patterns, which, you know, if it was one of these, it would not be hyphenated. But it is an adjective plus noun. And remember, this is the pattern that says when it's an adjective plus noun, it's not in a dictionary, then it's up for you to decide. So once again, I'm just restating myself to me. If it's not in the dictionary, it's not well known. Therefore, if it's not well known, then it's hyphenated. So to me, it's hyphenated. Use the words individually. It's not an insufficient fund or a fees fund. So you hyphenated. So insufficient, insufficient funds fee. This is an acceptable answer. But of course, when you see this coming, you know there's something else is coming. A Google search in, oh, indicates this is an open compound. Once again, like I said, who knows the people in Google are using it right. Uh, but uh, once again, Margie Wakeman Wells chimed in on this post and said, no hyphen, it's an open compound. So do I have it here? Yeah, so it's insufficient. So insufficient funds fee is a better answer because this is a banking term and this is a this is a probably a common term in the banking industry. So therefore, the better answer is no hyphen. So even though the hyphen is a completely acceptable answer. So it's either or. But I do believe Margie has the better answer. So example number six, subject matter jurisdiction. Check the dictionaries. It's not in any of these dictionaries, the uh, 
the free one, the unabridged, or dictionary.com, but it is in the Merriam-Webster Legal Dictionary. At the same website, they have a legal dictionary and a medical dictionary. And it has it as no hyphen. So technically, you could stop right there and be done. Because if you actually check the pattern, the pattern would say the hyphenated. Because remember, you don't hyphenate these patterns. So you hyphen, it's not one of those patterns you hyphenate. And it's not a subject jurisdiction or a matter jurisdiction. So you'd hyphenate based upon, because it's, you can't use it individually before the word. But we could just stop at step one. So if you didn't have the dictionary, so let's just say on this example, if you didn't have the dictionary and you're just sitting there typing away and didn't use the dictionary, you would come up, because if you said, oh, I have to memorize three and use them individually, you would end up putting a, a hyphen between these two if you didn't look it up in the dictionary, just so you know. So, you know, when I'm writing, I don't really go check every case in the dictionary. I usually just base it upon this. Actually, I usually just do this one right here. And I sort of know the L-Y and this one. So I sort of know this this rule. So I probably would have hyphenated. So if you didn't have a dictionary, this would probably be hyphenated. But the correct answer, because it's in the dictionary, is no hyphen. So seven voted for no hyphen. Obviously, they probably found it in the dictionary. The last example for this video is an overhead door type entrance. Oh, man, that one just looks hard. But it's not. Because video 51, I talked about separating the coordinate and cumulative adjective units and tests individually. So now you have to figure out which, what are they? Well, it's actually, this is how you separate it. It's an overhead door type entrance. So here's one, over, one adjective unit, which is just one word, and here's another adjective unit. So it's, an, it's a door type entrance that is overhead. Hopefully you get where I'm going with this, that this sometimes is how I help distinguish word that you know where's you know it could be an overhead door type entrance but you know you sort of have to play around with these but if you read it and you do that you develop a knack or with experience you can divide these up more easily but it's these are the two you need to test so you actually only need to test one because overhead's not going to take a uh, a hyphen I mean right maybe this could have been split into two words you have to know this is a single word but so you only have to test door type Door type is not in the dictionaries. You know, it's not one of these patterns, so you hyphenate it. And it's not a door entrance, and, nor, and neither is it a type entrance, so you hyphenate it. So we know it's a, oh, and then we do the test for coordinating adjectives. So you want to stick, you know, and in between these and switch them. An overhead and door type entrance, eh, sort of makes sense. Can you switch them? A door type overhead entrance? No. I can't sensibly reserve, uh, reverse it, and this was sort of a eh. So I know it's a cumulative adjective, which takes no comma. So it's an overhead door type entrance. If these were coordinating conjunctions or adjectives, we'd put a comma between these two. And four voted for overhead door type entrance. So that's it for this video. If you want to see more videos on, on court reporting or punctuation for court reporters, please subscribe. If you like the video and the content, please hit like. And please check out my videos and books. Thank you.